Hi, I'm Arthur Ismailov from University of Toronto and in my group we study geometric phase effects in non-adiabatic dynamics. Today I'll tell you about uh, an interesting setup how geometric phase will affect interstate crossing dynamics when we start say in the photochemistry event uh, from the upper electronic state and we will monitor the dynamics from the upper state to the lower state. Okay? And this is a very interesting setup in the sense of geometric phase effects because conical intersections that are responsible for appearing of geometric phase effects and also responsible for the uh, transitions between electronic states, they are usually perceived as photochemical funnels. And when people consider them as photochemical funnels, they don't really think too much about the geometric phase effects. Geometric phase effects are mostly perceived as something that is going on if you uh, artificially move the wave packet adiabatically on lower surface around the conical intersection. Right? But interestingly, that geometric phase effects actually can interfere with the actual transitions and today we'll see how they do it and how they modify the actual transitions between the upper state and the lower state. We will consider a simplest possible model for conical intersection which is two-state, two-dimensional uh, linear Vibronic coupling model which you may know uh, from the, our videos on the low energy dynamics and uh, this uh, a Hamiltonian in diabatic representation for this model uh, consists of kinetic energy for the nuclei and the potential energy matrix that uh, has uh, two diabats. Uh, you can think of them donor and acceptor, V11 and V22, and they are paraboloids in two-dimensional uh, nuclear space. Now they are coupled with linear coupling and uh, if you diagonalize this diabatic model then you will get the conical intersection profile in the adiabatic representation by diagonalizing potential energy uh, matrix. Right? So this is just a simple diagonalization of 2 by 2 problem. But the price we pay for the simplicity of the potential energy matrix is now complexity of the kinetic energy terms that, uh, that acquire off-diagonal terms compared to the diabatic model. Now, geometric phase effects, they appear only in adiabatic representation. And the reason we start with diabatic model is simply that the transfer from the diabatic model to adiabatic model is exact, while the uh, reverse transfer is not. Therefore, we will consider the diabatic model because we can obtain all the necessary quantities analytically for that model. And we will study the geometric effects of in the adiabatic representation of that model. Okay. How do we assess geometric phase effects in this problem? Let me remind you that the total electronuclear wave function in adiabatic representation is sum over products of electronic adiabatic function and the nuclear chi function, right? Now, if we study the nuclear dynamics, we will be monitoring the nuclear part of the problem, chi 1 and chi 2 components, and we will be solving time-dependent Schrodinger equation for them. Now, their evolution can be thought as evolution of a wave packet that consists of two components, chi 1 and chi 2, and they are evolving on W plus and W minus adiabatic states. And the transitions are stimulated by these non-adiabatic coupling element styles of diagonal terms. And there are also diagonal terms we'll be uh, considering as well. Now, these non-adiabatic coupling elements, they are nuclear derivatives of electronic wave functions because our electronic functions are position dependent. The only well, difficulty with this uh, representation is now in the presence of conical intersection, our electronic functions, they are uh, double-valued objects. And uh, that complicates the dynamics and uh, since these electronic functions are double-valued, but the total wave function should be a single-valued, our nuclear functions are also must be double-valued objects. Now, in the normal simulations, we do not simulate the nuclear wave functions uh, as double-valued objects, right? And that's why simulating the non-adiabatic dynamics in adiabatic representations is missing uh, this double-valuedness and will be different from um, simulating the same dynamics in diabatic representation. Now, the way out of this problem 
It was suggested by Mead and Schuller in 1979. And uh, what can be done is introducing of the resolution of identity of the with this phase factor that depends theta that depends on the nuclear coordinates. And this phase factor can be thought as a modification for the electronic part and the nuclear part. And uh, since it's a resolution of identity, it doesn't change the total wave function. Now, how it helps? It makes the electronic wave function a single-valued object uh, by specific choice of the theta function that is uh, detailed in the mid and tooler work and in our works as well. And also, the nuclear function now can be uh, made as a single-valued object as well. Now, going back to the assessment of the geometric phase effects, if we substitute the electronic function and nuclear function uh, by these new um, uh, functions with the phase, uh, phase uh, components, the non-adiabatic transfer elements uh, will be modified because the derivative uh, will affect this phase uh, component and will generate some extra terms. And that's why we will be separating two cases with geometric phase meaning that we account for these phase factors explicitly using the Mead and Schuller method of constructing them. And without geometric phase or no geometric phase, case will correspond to uh, ignoring this extra phase factor and ignoring double validness. So just working with bare non-adiabatic coupling elements. Okay. To move forward, uh, let's first uh, consider how the non-adiabatic uh, terms Taos modify dynamics, uh, how do they affect it? And let's start with uh, diagonal terms. Okay. Now diagonal terms, uh, the first order part will disappear in the absence of the geometric phase. And that's a simple exercise to show that. And uh, the main part of the diagonal taos are the second order uh, derivatives. Okay. And usually these second order derivatives are ignored in the actual calculations because they are relatively small at the minima of um, nuclear geometry. Okay. They are called uh, diagonal born oppenheimer corrections. And for the specific model we consider, two-dimensional 2D OVC model, uh, we can obtain them explicitly. And as you can see, um, they have a simple, relatively simple dependence on the nuclear coordinate x and y. And since we put the conical intersection in the center of our coordinate system, you can just by looking at this relatively simple expression, see that uh, the diagonal born oppenheimer corrections will diverge because the powers of uh, x and y in the denominator are higher than the powers in the numerator. Now, based on just its value, at the conical intersection, diagonal born oppenheimer corrections cannot be ignored because they diverge there. To, to see how uh, diagonal born oppenheimer correction debug uh, affects dynamics, we can just play with the parameters of the problem and uh, see how debug uh, looks like uh, around the conical intersection. So we can plot uh, this term, since it's a potential like term, in x, x and y. And the color code here is that the red areas are uh, the high areas and the blue ones uh, close to zero. Now, if we look at our initial setup from above and just we'll plot the debug, then starting at the Frank Condon region, with our wave packet, uh, we could envision that uh, forces on the potential energy surface uh, will drive the wave packet close to the conical intersection. And then, depending on the anisotropy of this uh, diagonal born oppenheimer correction term that is given by this gamma parameter in our uh, model, then if the debug is um, quite extended, then we can envision that it will not allow the wave packet to come close to the conical intersection, but rather uh, make it spread out uh, in a different direction along the y-coordinate. Or if the debug is quite compact, uh, that would correspond to the values of uh, 
gamma equals to 1, then the wave packet can go around conic intersection and may still uh, go through the transition to the lower state. Now to see that more dynamically, uh, here there is a simulation, again without geometric phase effects still, on the highly anisotropic case where the the Debock term is quite extended and we plot and we represent here the wave packet that is moving uh, and uh, the Debock term will be appearing like a wall that will crush the wave packet essentially. And that's what we see, the wave packet cannot come very close to the conical intersection region which is here but rather is smashed by this uh, extended wall that Debock produces. Okay. Now, if we add geometric phase effects to the problem, then because of the modification of electronic wave function with this uh, phase factor, geometric phase factor, then this diagonal Born-Oppenheimer correction will be modified. And uh, well, generally all the tau terms will be modified. Uh, but what is interesting in the problem that we considered before when we look at the wave packet on the upper state uh, moving towards the conical intersection with geometric phase, uh, what happens is quite natural thing is that the geometric phase uh, removes the wall and let the wave packet essentially move from the upper state to the lower state that would uh, in this dynamical simulation result in the uh, disappearance of the wave packet because we are plotting here only upper wave packet, right? And since the problem is two-dimensional it will eventually come back almost uh, the same as uh, it started like uh, the distortion of the wave packet is very um, small because the surfaces are very close to quadratic in this case. And uh, this uh, brings us to the first message of my presentation is that adding the geometric phase uh, partially removes diagonal Born-Oppenheimer correction. Why partially? Because it still uh, has the repulsion that doesn't allow the wave packet to move on the upper state. It makes all the wave packet essentially to move to the lower state rather than moving on the upper state. So Debock is partially compensated with geometric phase here. Now the second role of geometric phase in this problem as you may envision related to off-diagonal terms tau1,2 and tau2,1. These terms are stimulating the transitions between the upper and lower states. And uh, if we express for this model problem we're considering uh, those elements, then there is a really nice representation using the angular momentum operator. So in this problem we can uh, express the tau 1, 2 elements as the angular momentum operators in the numerator and some functional dependence in the denominator. These funny errors on top of the angular momentum is just introduced for the convenience when you have a matrix elements with this tau 1, 2, or tau 2, 1 elements then the angular momentum uh, here is operating on the bra uh, vector and the uh, angular momentum operator here operates on the uh, ket uh, function, right? But uh, that simplifies the consideration significantly because now uh, we can analyze how efficiently transfer happens if, uh, well, by just expanding our nuclear wave packet as a, uh, like in a cylindrical wave expansion. So here we have the radial components that have a subscript M the ang uh, that is enumerating angular function. Uh, these are just the uh, exponents that uh, they are um, eigenfunctions of a LZ operator, right, in this problem. And then uh, action of uh, angular momentum operator becomes very easy to do. Uh, and it just brings the M quantum number in front of the each term. And as you can envision, all the elements get some non-zero uh, factor but the M0 component, uh, right? 
And uh, this has a very simple uh, real life kind of analogy uh, related to the drinking from a bottle. And if someone asks you how to drink from a bottle in the fastest possible way, uh, you may, of course, uh, well, think that uh, the fastest way would be just to turn in bottle upside down. And uh, you can see right away the, this uh, cone-shaped structure at the bottom, and uh, which should remind you the upper state of the, uh, our problem. Now, if you do that, and if you, say, cannot squeeze the bottle, say, bottle is a glass or metal, it's not plastic, then uh, you will quickly realize that uh, there is one more problem. It's airflow. Uh, so the liquid doesn't go as efficiently as it could um, because of the airflow. So how to solve this problem? Well, one solution would be just to create the vortex that uh, will make the airflow possible. Uh, if you rotate the liquid in the bottle quickly, then there is a, uh, a possible airflow from the, from the bottom to the top, right? And that is pretty much the same as having the angular momentum of the wave packet uh, in our problem, because this airflow problem uh, and the blockage of non-rotating uh, wave packet uh, components are very similar in nature. While if your wave packet has an angular momentum component, those components will transfer from the upper state to the lower state very efficiently. Now what geometric phase effects do to this problem? They of course modify our tau 1, 2 and tau 2, 1 elements. And on top of this uh, uh, component that we have without geometric phase, we get some extra term that is not angular momentum dependent term. It's, it doesn't have angular momentum, it's just potential like term. And what this term does, it will enhance M0 uh, component because simply the angular momentum is not in this term, right? And uh, by just doing some algebra, it can be shown that this term can be thought as essentially adding some extra M component into the original uh, wave packet. So efficiently estimation of the uh, M number for the particular component of uh, a wave packet uh, becomes uh, different. It's not M from the angular momentum, but it's M plus one half, which should remind you the situation with the uh, adding the spin and uh, in general the geometric phase effects are very close to the adding the uh, spinner symmetry into the problem. Uh, that is not an exception uh, but rather uh, the same phenomena here. Now M0 component because of this term will be enhanced and that's the second row of geometric phase in this problem. Now in order to see how this all uh, works out in the real molecules uh, we will be considering three systems that are commonly considered uh, when people look at the, at least these two uh, on the ultra-fast dynamics from the upper state. And of course, all these systems, they contain more than two nuclear degrees of freedom. Of course, natural question would be how do we uh, apply the analysis uh, that we uh, just illustrated to you to these systems. Now, the answer to that is we use n-dimensional linear vibronic coupling model to parametrize the potential energy surfaces uh, that are obtained from the ab initio calculations for all this uh, system. So, right? And then in this paper we detail the procedure that allows us to find effective 2D model that reproduces uh, very well ultra-fast dynamics, and uh, this is possible. Essentially, you can reduce the dimension, uh, dimensionality of the problem if you are uh, only considering the very uh, short time scale. Now, what we will be looking at in this effective two-dimensional models we constructed for, the, for these uh, three problems, uh, three methods where we consider all the geometric phase effects, this is a full uh, geometric phase Hamiltonian in adiabatic representation. Then we'll be looking at uh, 
adiabatic Hamiltonian that uh, has no geometric phase effects. And by comparing these results of these two, we can see uh, how the geometric phase effects affect uh, dynamics. And then the third one that is also commonly used is the Hamiltonian where the diagonal Born-Oppenheimer correction, Debock diagonal terms, are also ignored on top of the ignoring the geometric phase effects, right? So we will see how uh, important this diagonal Born-Oppenheimer corrections by uh, looking at the results of this Hamiltonian. Now, first system, this method and the Montaigne cation, uh, we monitor the adiabatic population as a, a function of time by starting at the upper state. You can see that the full dynamics corresponds to the almost coherent oscillations back and forth in this system. That's why population, uh, we start at one, and then once it reaches the conic intersection and goes to the lower state, we are losing population of the upper state, the wave packet disappears uh, from our kind of uh, consideration, and then it will reappear because of recurrences in this two-dimensional system. Right, uh, almost full recurrence uh, happens because uh, the potential is very close to the harmonic. Now, what we see when we do not include geometric phase, uh, the dynamics is much slower. And the reason for that is that the diagonal Born-Oppenheimer correction, Debock term, is very anisotropic and it creates really a wall that doesn't allow the wave packet to come close to the conic intersection and uh, go to the lower state. As you can see, the dynamics, uh, well, pretty much like we, we don't lose more than 50% uh, well, of the wave packet uh, from the upper state in this dynamics. Now, if we do not include geometric phase and we don't include the uh, diagonal Born-Oppenheimer correction, then the results become uh, quite close to the full dynamics because now we artificially remove this uh, repulsive wall from the consideration. But this difference that we still have probably can be ad uh, attributed to the presence of still significant M0 component in the wave packet when it comes to conic intersection, M0 weight uh, is 42%. So 42% of the wave packet is not efficiently transferred because of the absence of the geometric phase in this problem. But still the dynamics qualitatively start reminding the, uh, the exact dynamics and uh, you can see that in this problem, the absence or presence of uh, Debock uh, well, plays a big role and uh, geometric phase effects, they are mostly in the compensating the Debock in the dynamics. Now the second system, Butatri and Cation, here if we compare the full dynamics uh, and then no GP dynamics, the dynamics without geometric phase, you can see that the rates, probably initial rates of uh, population decay in the full dynamical case, uh, well, two or three times faster than the, in the dynamics without a geometric phase. And that can be attributed to really large M0 component in this problem. So the, the situation is that uh, when wave packet comes to the conical intersection, it has very large M0 uh, component, and that's why without geometric phase, it cannot be transferred uh, very efficiently. Well, at least less if it, it is transferred less efficient than uh, with geometric phase. Now, as you can see from comparison of uh, method without Debock and without geometric phase, with a method without geometric phase only, those two are very similar. And that indicates that the uh, diagonal Born-Oppenheimer correction doesn't play a big role in this problem. And the reason can be traced to the small anisotropy of this term. So essentially, Debock is very compact uh, pole-like term that doesn't affect the uh, uh, dynamics of the wave packet too much. And uh, somewhat similar situation in the third system, pyrazine, where again diagonal Born-Oppenheimer correction is very uh, isotropic, I would say, the anisotropy is very small, then uh, without geometric phase or without geometric phase and without Debock, the dynamics is 
somewhat similar qualitatively, uh, but they are both very different from the full uh, exact dynamics because uh, M0 component is still high and uh, it's 90% when the wave packet comes close to the conical intersection and without a geometric phase and transition is less efficient and uh, the rate trans transfer rate is uh, much higher than with the uh, uh, geometric phase in this problem. Now I would like to conclude by uh, summarizing that uh, there are two main effects of uh, geometric phase in the uh, interconversion process when we go from the upper electronic state to the lower electronic state. And first is that the geometric phase can compensate the diagonal Born-Oppenheimer correction repulsion that doesn't allow the wave packet to come close sometimes to the conical intersection region. And this effect becomes important uh, for highly anisotropic systems. Uh, for example, we saw the bismethyl and adamantane case where it's a charge transfer process really. So in charge transfer cases, uh, we should be really careful with uh, excluding debug and excluding the uh, geometric phase effects. Now the second effect that uh, is also uh, induced by the geometric phase is uh, enhancement of M0 components uh, of the wave packet. When the wave packet comes close to the conical intersection and it collides with the point of intersection, almost like a central collision, then uh, if the wave packet has large M0 component, it's not going to be transferred as efficiently as in the case where you include the geometric phase. And that's the second main effect.